Khadak is about the human condition seen through a Mongolian prism, with its ongoing movements and tensions between past and future, growth and decay, between creation and destruction, between the search for meaning and the encounter with the absurd. The crew on Hadak was Russian, Mongolian, French, German, Dutch, Lithuanian, American, and Belgian. The cameras were 35 mm Aries that were winterized in St. Petersburg. They were winterized because the temperatures we faced reached down to minus 37 degrees Celsius. Hadak is in fact the first film shot entirely in winter in Mongolia. <laughs> Okay, well, hold on for a second, hold on, Aggie. Like that direction, not directly. A little bit, like turn. <laughs> yeah, opposite direction. Aggie, now she sits here so, but it's better when she so sits. Okay, sound. Speed 50, 53 on one. Take two. Action. <coughs> Thank you. 
Harak is a culmination of many years spent in Mongolia making documentaries. We were originally intending to make Flying Nomads, a poetic documentary about aviation in Mongolia with its parallel arc with socialism. But we stepped over that ambiguous border and decided to make Harak. The intention had always been from day one that it would be about a boy, son of a pilot, who would make the sky fall, awake his people from their apathy, and in some way or other alter their destiny. Yeah. What does Bjornbe say? They have to go home, yeah? The animals? Oh, I don't know. Nobody told me. Yeah, because they're so pregnant. It's very dangerous for them. They're pregnant, they're losing their babies. So we just do what we have and that's it. We cannot do anything. Dit is uh, open en deur, dicht van de deur van de jurt. Nog eentje. Thank you. Water!
lack of so. One of the themes lying beneath the surface of the narrative is greed. Greed in the sense that people in power with short-sighted goals are compromising the future of Mongolia. Foreign mining companies have come swooping in to prospect from all over the world. There's only discontent and controversy about how to exploit the precious resources without leaving a wake of ruined earth and souls behind. This is the case in the film and in reality. There are two key moments in the film where this perspective of the Mongolians is articulated. The grandfather says how poor we are at defending ourselves. The girl in the nightclub shouts something is wrong here. He wrote his lines. She spoke the lines of a Mongolian poet. They respectively capture the sentiment felt among the elderly and youth in Mongolia today. Something indeed is wrong here, and there, and elsewhere, and everywhere for that matter. Bagi's grandfather, Banzer Damcha, is an icon of Mongolian cinema, which during the socialist days was thriving. The mother of Bagi is an opera singer in the capital. The shamaness is not actually a shamaness, as many people suppose. She's an actress who had a formidable career on stage and on film during the socialist days. The Gang of Rebels is an actual rock band called Altan Urak. Yes. Ah, not sure. A little higher? Oh. Ah, that's a door. Ah. 
We screened 500 young people before choosing the girl and boy who play the leads. We looked all over the place in uh, Darhan, Erdenet, Baganur, the Gobi, tiny mining towns, and the capital, Ulaanbaatar. The boy Batsul is an engineering student. The girl Tsitske is a law student. They were both 19 at the time of shooting. Neither of them are actors. Not only did we have to find actors, we had to cast the tree as well. This was no simple matter. You can't just cut down any tree in Mongolia. It's just not that simple. You first need to find one that suits your frame and then get authorization and then uh, negotiate a price. Ours came down to $200 and then transport it from location to location, which was obviously not so simple. As for the progression of Kharak into increasing the abstract scenes, we're challenging the viewer to let go of how they normally tend to consume films, how they anticipate plot points and tidy endings. The usual viewer wants resolution delivered. In the case of Kharak, the resolution is actually up to the viewer. This isn't a puzzle to be assembled, nor is it a mystery to be unraveled. The fate of Bagi can be understood many ways. If everything has to be explained in such a rational way, then nothing is sacred anymore. As for the title, Hadak, it's the blue sacred scarf that one sees throughout the film. It can render an animal untouchable. It offers protection and it's a symbol of the sky. The sky in Mongolia is the ultimate judge of man's actions on earth. The Kharak is actually the only symbol in the film.
action belt by everybody can run Why Mongolia is the question that trails us everywhere. The spaces, the emptiness, the signs of past and future, the scale of things, the shadow of socialism, the wonder it inspired in us, the many friendships that grew over the years, the green, the blue, the white, the silences, the chaos of change the injustices, the ironies, the mirrors it holds up to our souls. Thank you everybody, we have done for today and for tomorrow and after tomorrow. <laughs>